surgery may not be the answer. Instead of the dangers involved in cutting out tissue, consider healing and rejuvenating the area with stem cells, platelet-rich plasma, or prolotherapy. The treatments that are available to professional athletes are now available for you. Watch the videos at jointrehab.com or call the Darrow Wellness Institute at 800-300-9300. 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Welcome back to Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow. I'm your host, Nita Valens, and we're taking your calls right here in the studio at 866-870-5752. That's 866-870-5752. We're here Saturdays at 10 a.m., again at 1 p.m. And please check out the website at www.lastemcells.com where you can email Dr. Darrow off of every page on the site and watch him performing the treatments on videos. That's www.lastemcells.com. What do you think? I love it. So before we move on and get started here, I just want to give thanks to Warren Beatty. No, I'm kidding. It's Warren Eckstein, the pet doctor who's got a show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we love you, Warren, and you're a great pet psychologist. So I want to get back to this um, this email that came in, a question about a bad knee from a patellar dislocation injury, thinking stem cell or PRP therapy. So this is one of the most common knee injuries I see, where the patella slides out of its track in the, in the femur called the trochlear groove. The patella is the round bone in front of the knee. And... Um, People don't know often why their knee hurts. They wake up in the morning and um, their knee is swollen. And when I look at it with the ultrasound, I see fluid in it. I withdraw the fluid. There could be blood, whatever. And what I do for that is I take the fluid out and then I take a teeny little needle, a 30-gauge needle. I go all around the patella and I inject what is called the retinaculum. It's the covering over the patella. And in a sense, the growth of the tissue using platelets or stem cells, it actually thickens up that tissue, tightens it up. And in a sense, it kind of tacks down the patella so it won't slide out anymore. I do this almost every single day for patients. It's just such a common thing. And then another thing that's related to it is patients end up getting what we call patella femoral syndrome. That means the patella is not tracking well in the femur. So patella femoral or patella femoral, whatever you want to say, syndrome. Um, and when they have that, when I put my hand on their on their knee, on the patella, and I bend and straighten the knee, I'll hear some grinding. That grinding in medicine is called crepitus. So if you've got some crepitus, then one of the ways to heal that actually it's the only one I know, is to inject all around that patella and underneath it with PRP, platelet-rich plasma. We just draw your blood, spin it in a centrifuge, and uh, take out the red cells because you put red cells in a knee, it blows up like a balloon. It irritates it. So I just inject around the patella. I always go into the joint also with an ultrasound, so I can see where that needle is going. That, that knee joint is almost impossible to get into with a needle without uh, ultrasound. I know most doctors don't use an ultrasound. They don't want to take the time to learn. They don't want to spend that extra forty grand to buy an ultrasound. I know that. But you can't do good work without the right equipment. And <clears throat> for shoulders, knees, hips, you've got to use an ultrasound to get into the joint. I know I fought the system for a while. Uh, I went to an ultrasound course, and they said I, they said exactly what I told you. And I fought them. I said, I've been doing this forever. I've done thousands of knee injections without it. And they started laughing, saying, yeah, you missed the joint. If you did a 1,000 of them, you missed the joint 333 times. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> and then they showed me how to do with an ultrasound. And with an ultrasound, you don't have to go into the knee joint and scrape off the cartilage. You, you go actually above the knee joint into what's called the suprapatellar pouch, the joint capsule, and it doesn't hurt. The other way hurts. So be sure you're going to a doctor that 
is studying. You know, a lot of doctors get out of school and they're stuck in the dinosaur age and that's traditional medicine. And I'm sorry to say most of my buddies who are doctors are dinosaurs. They're unwilling to look ahead and see what's going on that can help their patients. Okay, well, how about we see what's going on with Jerry in Santa Clarita? Jerry, Dr. Mark Darrow, do I treat scoliosis? Yes and no. Do you have any pain in your back? Uh, yes, constant. It's actually my wife. Okay, so let me tell you the story on scoliosis. <clears throat> Unless it's a very severe curve, it doesn't cause pain. When it becomes severe, I mean, like most people have a little bit of scoliosis, but they don't have back pain. Um, so if it's a severe curve, do you know how many degrees of curve her spine has? Not exactly, but I know it's pretty bad. Okay. I've seen the answer, if it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad? Okay. I would have to touch her spine and see where the pain is coming from. So... I don't think, I know there are doctors that say they can fix scoliosis using regenerative medicine, you know, using platelets or stem cells, but I don't really believe that. But we can often get rid of the pain surrounding that, okay? So most people that have a little scoliosis have back pain from another reason, and we can help that. But if it's severe scoliosis, I can't fix that curve and straighten out the spine, but I can often get rid of the pain that is associated with it. Any other Great. questions, Jerry? That's that's a good start right there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, and the other part of it is if we do inject the spine with scoliosis, theoretically, by strengthening up those ligaments that hold the spine in place, we can help it from continuing with the curve. There's no studies that I know about that. It's anecdotal, meaning I'm making it up. So don't think that we're going to fix your wife's spine, okay? But if she is having pain, I have to touch the area and see if that's something where I think I can help reduce the pain or eliminate it. Yeah, the pain is, and I know it's not going away, so <laughs> if we can help her with the pain, that would make me happy. It would make her happy. You know, I don't know if you heard the first part of the show, the first half hour, but I talked about an alkaline diet, you know, lots of fruits and okay, vegetables. Yeah. And that's something that I would have her try, okay? Okay. Have, have her give it a All week. Right. And then after the week, have her email me through my website, which is www.lastemcells.com. And I want to hear if that helped with her pain, okay? How often are they drinking that? What's that? How often are they drinking that? The alkaline diet? The al well, that's the mainstay of the food. You just have that. You live on that for okay. a week. I've done it. I've done it many times. All right. It, it, it gets rid of most pain much. in the body. And thank you for your call also, Jerry. Our number here in the studio is 866-870-5752, 866 870 And let's see what's going on with Frank in Long Beach. Frank, hi, Dr. Mark Darrow. Before I get to you, I just want to say one last word. Don't call me to ask what the alkaline diet is. It's very simple. It's basically fruits and vegetables, and you can look it up online. When we alkalinize the body, we get rid of the acidic milieu, and the acids in the body cause pain. All right, Frank, we're going to you. You've got hip issues. What's going on? How old are you, Frank? I am... 57. I will be 58 in October. Congratulations. So, I guess you must be a you must be a Libra, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Libra and proud of it. <laughs> and I love uh, Libras. Yeah, you know why? Libras Libras are so mellow. I love being around them. They balance me out. Um, I, uh, so anyway, I how long? How long? Ha good, good. Um, how long have your hips bothered you? You know, I first felt the pain back in 2005, but I thought it was a muscle. And you know yep. how men are. We, we have pain. We say, okay, it'll go away. All we have to do is work it out, give it a rest, so on and so forth. Uh, right. I've had the pain occasionally since then, but now it's 
it's you know full on to come back with a vengeance. I'm, I'm, yeah. You know the sins of my youth, as far as I can tell. Yeah. So I've been diagnosed you... with a non-displaced osteochondral fragment of the femoral head with a okay. partial collapse and slight deformity. Okay. So um, you may have uh, you may have avascular necrosis going on too, where um, the blood supply to the hip does not uh, continue on, and it starts to, um, the bone actually starts to decay. So I would have to, I'd have to examine you and move your leg around and see what that feels like, see what your range of motion is. Do you, can you walk okay? okay? Are you uh, there are days okay? when I can walk okay, walk okay, and there are days when I cannot walk okay. Uh, like this morning, okay. I woke up and my hip was great. And... Yep. Yeah. And there are times it'll do that, and by the end of okay. the morning, I, you know, I can barely walk. Okay. So it sounds like we can help you with that using platelets and or stem cells because you have <clears throat> enough range of motion to um, at least walk. Um, it, the cases that I have issues with are when the joint is just completely fused, when that hip joint is so fused that there's no motion in it. And then all we can do is hope that we can get rid of some of the pain, but we generally can't get the range of motion back. Shoulders are different because people often have what we call adhesive capsulitis, where the joint is fine, but the capsule is, um, is in a sense, scarred. And then we have to loosen that shoulder up. But the hip is different. And if it's actually arthritis that um, has that joint frozen, there's not much we can do. Well, same thing really with the shoulder or any joint. If it's if it's so arthritic that it's fused, that's a different story. So I have to examine you, Frank. And if you ever want to come into the office, the phone number there is 800-300-9300, 800-300-9300. And uh, we'll get you right in. Just say that uh, you're calling in from the radio. I'll get you in any day, time you want, okay? I'll sneak you into the office. I, I will call and make an appointment. I just have one other question. Um, yeah, how I hope long, you do. Uh, do, you, do, do uh, how long is it estimated that the platelet-rich therapy would, would work? I've been doing some reading, and they say that the results may last six months. Is it a permanent solution or a temporary solution? Because I'm really trying well, to the, avoid the, surgery. Sure, sure. Well, surgery is the last option, you know, always when it comes to musculoskeletal mm -hmm. issues. Unless there's a broken bone or the bone is sticking out of the leg, then you got to get right to the surgeon, get it fixed, right, for safety exactly. reasons. But most of the surgeries that I see shouldn't have been done, okay? Now, that's just me. That's not God talking. That's just little old me, in my opinion, watching patients. Because the surgery often is going to take out, take out tissue and destabilize the joint or do a joint replacement that's not going to last. You're only 57 years old. You know, you do a hip replacement, it's not going to last if you're active. And then after the bone is worn away from the metal inside of it, from being active, what do you put in there? The bone is not, you know, it can fracture after that. So I'm not I'm one sure. who likes hip replacements. Um it's rare that I ever send somebody for a hip replacement or joint replacement. It has happened, but very rarely. We can usually help people. What are, what other questions do you have? How long does it last? I'm, I'm, how, yeah, how long? Yeah, how long? Last? How long do the treatments last? <clears throat> well, the body is going to decay and die. All right. <laughs> so, so there's no guarantees. There's no warranties. Um, I'll, I'll tell you my own um, experience. My right shoulder has been injured pretty badly, I'd say three or four times. I can't remember because the first time was when I was in medical school. And the first time I injected myself, it was healed overnight with one treatment. Twelve years okay. later, playing tennis, I injured it again. And um, that took me two injections. So that was 12 years between the first and the second time. The third time, I can't remember how long after it was, but it was a long, long time. And that took me a few injections. It didn't heal right away. So it's different for everybody. 
it's different. Every person is different, Frank. And um, we can never tell a person, doctors should never tell a person if they're going to heal or not and how many treatments it'll take. You know, we're not, um, we're not, uh, what's a good word for predictors? We're not good predictors. We don't have crystal balls. And uh, uh-huh. I'm just we can, I'm yeah, sure. we can just tell we can tell you our experience after we examine you and look at your history. I can give you a pretty good idea, but I could be totally wrong because I can get you all fixed up and then you can go out and abuse it. And that's what most people do. They cheat on me. I tell them, leave it alone, let it heal. And they come back and they go, it's worse. And I go, you cheated on me. You did your sport. You weren't supposed to. So you got to let these things heal. If you have a surgery, you're forced to let it heal because you're in so much pain you can't do anything. With this, it's just an injection. You walk in the office, walk out, and it's pretty easy to go back and do your sports or whatever activity it is, even, let's say, gardening. Gardeners end up with tons of pain. It sounds ridiculous, uh, but it happens. Uh, golfers, you think it's not a sport. I probably get more golfers than any other sport. You know, they're swinging a club 100 miles an hour and every part of their body can be destroyed. I'm a golfer, I know. I've had neck pain from golfing, shoulder pain, wrist pain, finger pain, knee pain, hip pain, you name it. And uh, I have to admit, when I hit the ball, I want to hit it hard. And I like to do it repetitively. I like repetitive things. We all do. I play... I like I play musical instruments. I love repetition. And sports for me is repetition. I love perfecting things. And I pay the price. I'm not going to lie about it. But luckily I have in my armament a treatment that has helped me for the last, my God, since I was about, how old was I in med school? I started med school pretty late at 41. So I was in my, mm. um, in my early 40s when I started doing this. I'm 72 now. And I'm just about as active as I was then. I'm going to go play golf. You can't see me on the video that's uh, watching me right now. But I'm going to go play golf today. I'm wearing my golf shirt and my golf hat. And I adore golf. I love being outdoors. And I can say there's probably no place I love better than to be on a pretty golf course. I drive all the way up to Pebble Beach. It's a five. Have you ever heard of Pebble Beach? Yes, I have. You know, it's near Carmel. I drive five hours to get up there to play those courses because they're on the ocean, and it is heaven. So and I'm active. Stress, awesome. Well, it does reduce the stress. I mean, I always have something to look forward to. It's like it's like dying and going to heaven and, and being here at the same time. It sounds like anyway, a mountain bike. I, I enjoy being outdoors. Yeah. Are you still mountain biking? No, I haven't done it uh, for years, but, I, you know, I can relate to you when you say it's beautiful. It's beautiful being in the hills, seeing a coyote or, or a deer run by. Yeah. You know, I live up in the I live up in the mountains on a very I live on a very steep mountain and we have guys mm-hmm. sailing down the road, um, mountain bikers and actually road bikers come up here, too. And they must be going. Mm-hmm. I mean, I might be making this up, but I'm usually going like around 40 or 50, the speed limit. And they're faster than me. They pass me by. Is that possible? Well, whoosh. Yeah, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got uh, yeah, Frank, I, God bless I, you. I, I, There's good hope for your hips yeah, using regenerative medicine. Me, so. We've Thank got you. Sandy coming up. And uh, Nita, you want to say something before we talk to Sandy? Yeah, I just want to say our number here in the studio is 866-870-5752. And we have a few minutes left. And we have Sandy in San Diego. Sandy in San Diego. Okay. Sandy, how old are you? Well, actually, I'm calling about my dad who's in his 90s. And he's been a landscaper for many years. And he's got like a bone-on-bone thing going on his knee. And they want to do... Okay. A uh, surgery, and I am not a hundred percent sure that that's the only option. So, I'm calling you because right. you're a genius, and I love listening to you and Nita on the show. You guys are fabulous. Well, thank thank you, you, thank you so much. 
We appreciate you, Sandy. Yeah, we have jokes today, um, so, too. So, so let's talk about 90 years old and more and, and major surgery like a knee replacement. Don't do it. That's the answer. There's too many potential uh, what we call sequelae, okay? There's infections. There is pain afterwards. There can be loosening of that prosthesis afterwards, and it's just not a good deal. Can your dad walk at all? Yeah, but in a lot of pain. But can he? Can he? What I'm really getting at is, can he bend his knee? Uh, a little. Okay. Very painful. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's not the pain I'm concerned about really here, because we get rid of pain every day in knees all over the body. I'm just concerned if there's some range of motion. If there's no range of motion, probably there's not much I can do. But someone being in their 90s, I would never, ever suggest a knee replacement. It is, from the patient's point of view, a horrible surgery and difficult to recover from with lots of side effects. So Mm -hmm. could it work? It certainly could. But I get all the people that come in with knee replacements where it doesn't work. So I have a jaundiced eye about knee replacements and surgery. I have to tell you that. I don't like surgery. And when I was in medical school doing orthopedic surgery, I had a shoulder surgery. You know, my boss said, oh, we'll fix it up. No big deal. It jacked my shoulder up for years afterwards. And it wasn't until I learned about regenerative medicine that I injected my own shoulder and was healed overnight. That's not typical. It's not common. Uh, The way I look at it is spirit was waking me up to get out of surgery and to do regenerative medicine, which I've enjoyed and helped endless thousands of people not have to have surgery. So it's I certainly worth... I do have worth... a question for you. My sure. sister took my dad to the doctor, and they told... This was to get a second opinion. And this doctor said that there was some kind of procedure that could be done in the office where I guess he would get maybe like a local anesthetic or something like that. I'm not sure of the whole process, but it wouldn't be a replacement, but it would be some other kind of procedure. So I'm not sure what I that don't, was. I don't know what that is, Sandy. I know pretty much what's going on out there. I try to stay up on all the science and what doctors are doing. So I don't know what that is. I would love, I would love, love, love if you would find out what the name of the procedure is. And then email email me through the website at www.lastemcells.com so I can learn something. Maybe it's better than what I do. If it is, I'll switch. (laughs) What would you suggest if there was range of motion and there was something that could be done? Would that be... Well, uh, drive him up here. Let me take a look. It'll take me two minutes, two Uh minutes to touch his knee and move it to tell you what's going on. Well, you know, and, and I'm glad you mentioned the term bone on bone. That is the biggest crock on the planet, okay? Almost every patient who comes in with joint pain says, my doctor told me it's bone on bone, and I look at it and I move them around. And I go, it's not, and I start laughing. So bone on bone is just a statement that is used to tell people they need to get surgery, and it's not correct in most cases. Thank you for your call, Sandy. God bless you, Sandy. God bless your father. So uh, get a hold of me through the website at www.lastemcells.com. Nita, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Darrow. And staff, thank Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Suzette, and we'll see you next time. You've been listening to Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow. Now that you've heard Dr. Darrow, You can schedule an appointment to talk with him in person by calling his office anytime at 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Or go online to lastemcells.com. Again, the website is lastemcells.com. Living Pain-Free with Dr. Mark Darrow is heard every Saturday at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. here on AM870, The Answer. Remember, 
To take the first step toward a pain-free life, schedule an appointment by calling 800-300-9300. That's 800-300-9300. Live long and pain-free. And thanks for joining us today.